Welcome back to the Fan Showdown Season 3, Episode 1. Yeah, we're jumping right into Season 3 this week for, for a couple of reasons. One, the first one being that we've tested a lot of fans in Season 2. Uh, 62, to be exact. And going into a new season allows us to do like a big reset uh, and gives everybody the opportunity to make the board. So I think it's, uh, I think it's needed. Other than that, the Slug and the Wing Fort put down some pretty, uh, pretty amazing scores last week. And I feel like they're going to be... Those scores specifically, I didn't think could get that low, and I think they're going to be hard to beat, especially on that specific cooler. And speaking of coolers, I got a new one that I want to try, and that is the Noctua NHP1. Yes, this is Noctua's new passive air cooler, and it'll be the test bench for Season 2, or Season 3, of the Fan Showdown. And, I, and I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited to use it. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's a, a passive air cooler designed to work with no fans? So using that means that even if you design a fan that's hot garbage uh, and doesn't move any gear, you're still gonna score reasonably well. And that's not necessarily true. Yes, it's a cooler designed to work with no fans, but that's under some pretty specific uh, requirements. One of those being, you gotta use a CPU that has a low to moderate heat load. So if you are planning to do a build with the NHP1, it's a good idea to head over to Noctua's website, input the CPU that you're gonna, that you wanna use and see if it is compatible for fanless operations. So when I do that, the CPU that I'm going to be using is still the 7700K and the recommendations from Noctua is to pair that air cooler with the low noise version of the A12X25. Or in other words, they're saying, yeah, if you run this cooler with no fans on the 7700K, there's a good chance that it's gonna throttle at least a little bit. So yeah, you should just go make sure that uh, your chip is gonna work. And if you, if you add in the fact that we're gonna be overclocking the 7700K to 4.9 gigahertz, that means we're gonna be pretty far beyond uh, the design capabilities of the NHP1, at least in fanless operations. It'll work fine with a, with a fan on it. And I even tested it. I, I went ahead, put the air cooler on the open air test bench on the 7700K, clocked up to 4.9 gigahertz, ran out of 64, and after a few minutes, yeah, it thermally throttled into oblivion. So we're good on that one. But the real reason I want to use this cooler is, well, not only does it look cool and it's new, the way the fan mounts to it is pretty helpful for the type of fans we run on here. When it's mounted in the, the open air test bench, the fan actually mounts directly to the top, meaning that it points straight up, which is uh, a really good configuration when you're testing really goofy, oddly shaped fans. You know, like the normal ones we, we test around here. And as you all expected in the comment section of the last video, after the Mark II slug did amazing, there has been a flood of designs that take advantage of using things like velocity stacks and stuff like that, which bodes well to this air cooler given the way that we're gonna be mounting the fan. So there's really no height limit other than the fact that the Prusa can only print 210 millimeters tall at a time. But uh, I guess the ceiling in here is like eight foot. <laughs> but you can pretty much make as, as tall of a stack as you want to now or a fan you could do you could do a really tall vase now too might get a little wobbly but you know other than that i did ask you guys if you wanted to do some noise normalization for season three and most of you told me to pound sand so uh we're gonna send these to the moon as normal it's we're just gonna max them out let them run as fast as they can uh we will keep track of the db rating of each fan so if there's a tie in the future on the on the board we can have like a little tiebreaker um other than that, there is five fans this week. Uh, um, we normally do four, but from season two, episode 15, I'm gonna be testing the super fan again because you guys all informed me that I ran it upside down and since I'm a Papega, I thought it was only fair to run the super fan again in the correct orientation, the one that Andreas um, designed it for. So we're gonna be running five fans a day, four new ones, and the old super fan properly mounted. Uh, I think that's it. That's, that's all we got new. If you want to get involved in the fan showdown, check the description below. I'll leave everything you got to know uh, to submit a fan. So let's get started. So the first new fan of Fan Showdown Season 3 will be the Bra. The Bra was designed by Gabrielle from Quebec, Canada, and the inspiration behind this fan was Kiki's fan, the WID from Season 2, Episode 9. Now the Bra has 12 blades that are mounted on the outside of the fan disc and six more blades that are mounted below those that hold the outside ring and the 12 blades. And the idea they were going for is they're hoping that the outside 12 blades help push air down into the center and the six blades underneath will then accelerate it through the fan disc. Now the reason Gabriel calls this fan the bra is because he feels that 
we're all fan brothers and we're inspiring each other to get out there and design new fans for the next episode, just like him. And the next one's actually a perfect example of this. This is the trash can lid and it was created by Aiden. And he said, hi, this is literally the first thing I have ever made on CAD. I just watched a lot of fan showdown videos and decided, hey, I'll just give it a shot. And boy, this took me a while. And that's what it's all about. You don't have to have a PhD in aerodynamics or be a professional CAD user. You just gotta wanna give it a shot. And that's what Aiden has done here. Now, I don't know why, he chose a trash can lid. Maybe he looked out the window and saw a trash can and that was his inspiration. Or maybe he thought this fan was gonna be hot garbage. I don't know, but either way, it looks like a trash can. It looks like a fan, so well done. Yeah, you nailed it. Now these first two fans are relatively standard, kind of what you'd expect when thinking about a, a fan. That's a little different, but that's pretty fan-like. Um, these next two, they stray a little farther from standard. <laughs> The first one is the semi-radial stator fan, and this was created by Joanne, and this is actually a three-piece design, composing of a center fan, an outer ring stator with veins, and an upper ring um, fairing, more or less, to improve aerodynamics. Joanne designed this fan to be, you know, slightly smaller than a standard A12X25 fan, and he's hoping that that's gonna give him some more rotational speed, and the stator veins are there to hopefully turn that rotational energy coming off the fan blades into more air moving through the fan disc. And then you got the upper ring, which is essentially just there to act as a fairing to help guide air into the fan disc and hopefully improve airflow. All in all, the fan and all of its parts printed out pretty well and everything fitted together very nicely. So good job thus far, Joanne. You, you at least nailed all of your clearances. Now this last one is a design that I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen before. Maybe others have submitted similar designs, but this is like literally one of the first ones that I've seen so far. This is the turbocharger and it was created by Peter. Peter says that he's a mechanical engineering student and a car guy from Hungary, and he wanted to kind of combine the best of both worlds. And I think Peter's done a pretty fabulous job combining a turbo compressor and a PC fan. I mean, just look at that intake bell. When you, you look right down it, it, it looks exactly like the intake of a turbocharger. And also your clearances were also very well done. Everything fits together snugly. You didn't make anything too tight or you didn't mess up any of your radii, everything, I mean, it printed really easily too. So, so far, again, top notch on design and clearances. Everything fits together very well. And again, like I said, the bonus fan this week is the super fan again. Uh, I ran it like this last time, which is incorrect. Uh, oops. But this time around, we're gonna run it as designed and see if it does uh, any better. See how it stacks up to these four and the A12X25, which we will be running this week because it's the season one of episode three. We need to get that baseline on the new air cooler of the A12X25. But let's first talk noise. The trash can came in at 44.6 dBA. The semi-radial stator fan came in at 45.7 dBA. The bra came in at 48.1 dBA. The turbo came in at 45.7 dBA. And the super fan from last episode came in at 50.6 dBA, meaning the trash can came out on top, the semi-radial stator fan and the turbo tied for second. The bra came in third and fourth goes to the super fan. But I know why you guys are really here. I mean, we all want to know what they sound like, but we really want to see how well they move air.
love it. So how did they cool the new NHP1 mounted on the 7700K overclock to 4.9 gigahertz? Well, let's first start with the A12X25. The A12X25 finished with an average temperature of 76.3 at a room temperature of 20.1, giving us a delta of 56.2. Next up, the Superfan, properly this time. Came in with an average temperature of 82.4 at a room temperature of 20.4, giving us a delta of 62. And as for the four new fans, the trash can came in with an average temperature of 78.6 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a delta of 58.1. The semi-radial stator fan came in with an average temperature of 79.6 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a delta of 59.1. The bra came in with an average temperature of 81.2 at a room temperature of 20.3, giving us a delta of 60.9. And the turbo came in with an average temperature of 81.7 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a delta of 61.2. Meaning the trash can, once again, comes in first place. The semi-radial stator fan got second, the bra in third, and the turbo in fourth. But overall, the A12X25 is currently on top. And Aiden, it may have taken you a fortnight <laughs> to have uh, created this fan. But you have come in first place, and you've done so while also being the quietest. So hats off to you, sir. Thanks again for everybody that has been involved, watched the series, sent me fans. Uh, I, I had no idea that the fan showdown would become what it has when we started season one, but it's amazing. There's no sign of stopping. So if you have a design out there, go ahead and send it over because we're going to make the fan showdown the uh, This Old House series of YouTube.